there guys, I am Asa and welcome to my channel English Lessons with Asa. Today we're going to talk about 15 common American phrases. Yes, you heard that right. Phrases commonly used by Americans. Keyword, Americans. So if you like American English, American accent, or you want to speak like an American, then this video is for you. But before we dive into it, if you haven't subscribed yet, then please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss any of my videos. Now, let's dive into it. When Americans want to tell someone to stop and consider carefully their decision or opinion about something, or they simply want to tell the person to wait or be patient, they usually use the phrase, hold your horses. Hold your horses! So to put it in a sentence form, we can say, Hold your horses. We need to have a discussion on this situation first before we jump to conclusions. It simply means um, wait or be patient. We need to have a discussion to carefully consider the situation at hand before we jump to conclusions. So that's the first phrase, hold your horses. Okay, remember guys, this is informal English, more like slang. So I advise you not to use these phrases in your formal conversations like business conversations no don't do it you can use it um in your daily conversations with your friends your colleagues your mates not in formal conversations keep that in mind all nighter are you pulling an all-nighter americans use this phrase when they're studying or working throughout the night that is an activity that lasts the entire night he pulled an all-nighter to study for the exam that is it means he stayed up all nights to study for the exam all nighter so you know when you want someone to move slightly in order to make room enough on the sofa for you to sit yeah that americans use the phrase scoot over scoot over scoot over <laughs> example can you please scoot over i want to sit and watch the movie too <clears throat> this is me bringing my american accent please bury me so Scoot over, I want to sit and watch the movie too. It simply means, can you please move slightly, make room for me to sit and watch the movie too. So that's the second phrase, scoot over. So when Americans want to describe something of the highest standard, they usually use the phrase top notch. Top notch. They're simply trying to say the product or the service is of the best quality. Simply excellent. Example. She always stays in top-notch hotels when she goes on vacation. It means she stays in the best hotels when she goes on vacation. Top-notch. When you pay for something, probably a product or service, more than you're supposed to, what do you call that? Americans call that a rip-off. Total rip-off. You've been ripped off. This phrase could also mean swindle, cheat, exploit, or take advantage of. Example. You got yourself a faulty car at a very expensive price. This whole situation is a rip-off. That is, you have been swindled, you've been cheated, you've been exploited, you've been taken advantage of. One, a faulty car was sold to you, and two, at a very expensive price. You paid more than you're supposed to. So this means you have been ripped off, or the whole situation is a rip-off. Get under your skin. Says that get under your skin this phrase has three meanings so when an american says oh lord he gets under my skin <clears throat> it means he annoys me he irritates me intensely i cannot stand him it could also mean a form of obsession for instance i can't stop thinking about him since the last time i saw him he's literally gotten under my skin it means i can't stop thinking about him he intrigues me. He fascinates me. He's become an obsession. He's gotten under my skin. Another meaning of this phrase is to gain a rich or thorough understanding of someone to the point you can sometimes predict their next move. How did you know he would make that move? Oh, I feel I've gotten under his skin. We've been spending a lot of time together lately. It means he's been spending a lot of time with this person. So now he understands the person very well. He has a thorough and rich information and knowledge about the person. So he can kind of predict what the person would do or decide on certain situations. 
get under your skin. The next phrase I believe you've had a lot of times in American movies, break a leg. Break a leg. So when Americans say break a leg, what they mean is good luck or give your best performance. His family told him to break a leg right before he went up on stage. It simply means his family told him to give his best performance or simply good luck right before he went up on stage. When Americans say she's a keeper, he's a keeper. They're referring to someone who would make better marriage material. Someone who you'd like to spend the rest of your life with. So basically saying someone worth keeping. He's a keeper. Bella is beautiful. She has a good job and she's very loyal. She's definitely a keeper. It means she's someone worth keeping. Someone you would want to spend the rest of your life with. A keeper. For the record, I'm not American. Though English language is my official language. So that's the next most common American phrase. For the record. For the record. Americans use this phrase when they want to make something clear or they want to make some facts known. For the record, I have never been to his apartment, though he's invited me over several times. You know when you meet or see a very beautiful woman standing to the point you're out of words, you don't really know how to actually describe her beauty. Well, Americans have a phrase for that. Well, quite a phrase though. Drop dead gorgeous. She's drop-dead gorgeous. This phrase describes a very good-looking woman. Really good-looking. I mean, saying beautiful is not enough. It doesn't justify her beauty. So then you go for the phrase drop-dead gorgeous. That means she's just beautiful, exceptionally beautiful. You bet. You bet. Americans say you bet when they want to say yes, sure, of course or certainly it's just another way to emphasize you agree with something you would you like this piece of cake you bet it means yes sure of course i want it i want to eat it the next phrase is hit the road let's hit the road it means to leave a place or to begin a trip for instance, you're out partying with your friends and you check the time and realize it's late and you have to go back home. You can simply say, okay guys, it's late, gotta hit the road. It simply means it's late and you have to go home. Hit the road. Crash. I gotta crash here tonight. So this word has a couple of meanings. To sleep or to stay at someone else's house for the night. Dude, I'm gonna crash. See you later. It simply means he's going to sleep. Another example. Dude, is it okay if I crash here? He's asking if it's okay he sleeps at his house for the night. Another meaning of the word crash is to show up somewhere uninvited or unexpectedly. Those guys crashed my girlfriend's party, but they brought drinks, so we let them stay. Putting up a front. I gotta put up a front. This phrase means someone is putting up a false or deceptive appearance. You know, when someone is acting like they are better than they really are, they're putting up a false facade. It means they are putting up a front. She put up a good front, though I know she was very disappointed. It means she was pretending to be okay, though she was very disappointed. She put up a false appearance, though she was very disappointed. Put up front so with this last phrase i'm sure you hear it a lot of times in american movies especially sports related american movies a game bring your a game good you better bring your a game so what americans mean by a game is one's highest level of play or performance that is one's best possible performance if we don't bring our a game with us we don't stand a chance of winning it means if we don't bring our highest level of play, our best performance, we do not stand a chance of winning a game. So there we have it, guys. 15 most common American phrases. Want to sound like an American? Learn and use these phrases in your daily conversations. If you enjoyed my lesson, please give it a thumbs up, comment, share, and of course, subscribe to my channel to show your support for my work. 
and i hope you join me again in the next lesson until then bye bye